things after the Renaissance, Jesus looks like a white dude, right? So God is his father, so God must be white. So if you all of a sudden you decide God is black, well, this messes up things somewhat. I mean, it complicates things. So the Rastas then propose that maybe God is black. Now, if it doesn't matter, then it doesn't matter, right? In other words, if it doesn't matter whether God is black or white, then let's just make him black. How about that? Just, you know, since it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it, if it really doesn't matter, then he's black. Now, now, what I'm getting at is when we wrestle with that question, it's not the answer. We don't know that. We will see that in, it, in the here and after, whatever he is or she is, whatever, you know. We'll see that in the here and after. But the wrestling with the question tells you where culture and cultural practices are shaping the way in which we, we perce perceive ourselves and we understand ourselves. What the Rastafarian was doing was unseating certain cultural expectations that were couched in the idea of faith and Christianity. So they create a cosmology and a new cosmology that is proposing something different. It was a profound cosmology, a cosmology based on Haile Selassie as the return messiah. People will say, this is just foolishness. Well, Selassie traces his line to the Queen of Sheba. This is, you know, this is, this is part of the, 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 the study, and it's not something that is just made up by anybody. I mean, it may not be the case, but clearly that line is traced, and Selassie declared that, and the Ethiopian lineage of king, kingship believe in that lineage. So the proposition is that Haile Selassie is the god the return Messiah. But tied to that belief system, therefore, is that you look to Africa as the place, the promised land, as the positive place, as a place that you embrace. And when that encounters a culture that has looked elsewhere for the promised land, namely the mother country, namely America as the promised land, it is shifting the paradigm. Reggae music challenged the old paradigm. Rastafarianism was challenging the old paradigm. So that in songs that began to express the history of slavery and the history of change, we begin to understand that. Third World pr pr produced a song that is really one of the most beautiful lyrics that you'll ever find. It's called, actually called 1865 or 96 degrees in the shade. And most people sometimes hear it and don't even know what the song is about. 96 degrees in the shade, real hot in the shade. The song is about the Moran Bay Rebellion of 1865 when Paul Bogle, a Baptist, assisted by George William Gording, a colored Baptist who was part of the parliament at the time in Jamaica, decided to protest the cruel and inhuman treatment of workers who were former slaves by the, by, by the local planters. They weren't paying them right. And they decided to write a letter to the Queen of England and they asked the Queen of England, Victoria at the time, they said, what can you do to, 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 to protect us and to, to make things better for us? And the Queen said, obey the governor. Follow what the governor says. And that was Governor Eyre. And so there was a rebellion. And the rebellion took place in Moran Bay Square. Some of the, the Costas and some of the white folks were killed. And then air began a repressive, repressive series of actions that would lead to the death of 800 blacks hung, including Bogle and George William Gordon. And then Third World begins to tell that story in this great lyric. I think I have the lyric here because I want to get the lyric right. Listen to it. Said it was 96 degrees in the shade, 10,000 soldiers on parade. This is accurate. These were the red coats, the British. Taking eye and eye to meet a big fat boy, sent over from overseas, the queen employ. 
Excellency, before you, I come with my representation. You know where I'm coming from. You caught me on the loose, fighting to be free. Now you show me a noose on the cotton tree. Entertainment for you, martyrdom for me. 96 degrees in the shade, real hot in the shade. The song is written in the voice of Paul Bogle. And Paul Bogle is standing before the big fat boy, Governor Ayer. And he's saying, Excellency, before you, I come with my representation. You know where I am coming from. Then in the next verse it says, some may suffer and some may burn, but I know that one day my people will learn. As sure as the sun shines way up in the sky, today I stand here a victim. The truth is I'll never die. 96 degrees in the shade, real hot in the shade. Now, there's something phenomenal going on when songs in the popular exchange of culture, where songs that you're going to a party to dance to, where songs that you're hearing on the radio, in a bus, all over the place, are singing about historical things that you should be learning in school, we say. <clears throat> There's something going on in a culture when you are actually hearing historical experiences articulated in a way that they seem to be absolutely relevant to your present day experience. The project of 1970s, much of the reggae of the 1970s, was driven by this idea that we need to sing songs that will draw people into that understanding, into that understanding of time, and into that understanding of the importance of history in the present and in the past. Reggae music then began to change the way in which Jamaicans understood themselves, began to change the way in which Jamaicans engaged with the rest of the world. And that change is not a small thing. In fact, that change is a very significant thing that, that was taking place. There's a song by Bob Marley called Redemption Song. Now you know the song, right? Good. Promising. <laughs> now, I want us to look real carefully at Redemption Song for a moment. And let me tell you why I think that song is so important, and it helps us to see what is going on with the, with the music of Bob Marley, for instance, and the music of reggae music. It's a short song. It, 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 in recordings, it typically lasts no longer than about three and a half minutes at the most four minutes. It's a tight, compact lyric. But in it, Mali succinctly articulates all the dimensions of what he is doing with his music, with the question of history, and with the question of faith. Now here's one of the key truths that we should always remember, that in the music of many reggae artists, the idea of history is inextricably tied to biblical history. In fact, they are not separated. When Bob Marley says, I remember when they crucified Jesus Christ. His next line is, I remember when they turned their backs on Paul Bogle. 